Good morning. I'm doing a quick video this morning, I think, for my update. Uh, I had my second treatment on Tuesday. Today is Saturday morning. I think it's like around 8.30, something like that. Last time I checked the time, I just got back from a walk. My daughter, and Amy, daughter Amy and I took a walk. I'm out by my barn, and I thought, well, today I'll do a bald head and chickens. That's my update today. So the hat today is Cape Canaveral, another Cape Canaveral, Florida hat. Uh, that's where my parents lived in their twilight years and um, where my brother Gary lived and where he also passed away. So I have several uh, Cape Canaveral, Ron John surf shop type of hats. So that's the hat for today. The background today is my barn here in the back with my chicken coop. And the part where the metal roof is right here, well, let's see, yeah, this area, that's where a pine tree that was directly behind this phone fell and crushed their front porch, porch excuse me. So I had to kind of rebuild that. And then that's the chicken coop. This chicken coop was basically built out of pallets. And then the material on the outside uh, is from Bob Billinghurst. I don't know if Bob or Kathy are watching. Uh, if you're, he had all these cutoffs of these pieces from his factory over in Marshall where they made, I believe he made um, kind of the structural components of uh, sleeper cabs for tractor trailers. And these were like leftover cutoffs and I used them to make the siding. And then I did use some four by fours and maybe a couple two by tens, but everything else is basically uh, from pallets. Um, this pallet wood just cut up and used. I got from Bob also, he gave me a lot of pallets. And then inside I actually made I'll turn the light on in here. You can see, I don't know how well it's going to work out. I made some boxes out of that material from Bob. This is a years ago. I don't know how many years ago it's been when I first got the chickens and built this coop. The paneling actually came out of Fellowship Baptist Church. We had a lot of paneling left over. So I used a paneling to panel. My chickens, they're living, man. They got paneling. And then um, this is my feeder bin right here. It holds about a 40, 50 pound bag perfectly. I didn't plan that, but it worked out that way. And that's nice. My little water heater that I don't have set up right now. That's for winter time. A little light bulb with a cinder block and a tile on top of it. It's a mess right now. I got a heat lamp up there, but I've learned, you don't, chickens don't need heat. They don't need it. I mean, if it got down maybe below like 20 below, I might turn that heat lamp on, but they, I don't turn it on anymore and they're fine. They might lay less eggs when it's really cold. I'll go in here. It's a mess right now. It really needs to be cleaned out. And they also lay eggs. There's none up here right now because we got the eggs out. They lay eggs up here. This was originally, this shelf was going to be a place where I stored things, but the chickens went right up there and laid eggs. So now it's another just box for them. This is their roosting rack that they use at night. And this is my automated watering system. There's, I, there's a tote up there that I have a hose that goes back and I connect it to the hose to the house and then it fills that up and then the water comes down. Whoops, let's see if I can get it in the picture. This pipe and goes over to here. Let's see if I can get this and get in. And then they come and they peck on these little yellow things and then water comes out. I don't know if you can see that. There you go, water comes out and that's how they get a drink. <clears throat> and I have another watering tank there just in case that fails because it has failed and I've had to repair it, but it's working fine now. So, and then today I have this little area out here that I just kind of store junk and I just opened it up and I put, let's see if I get, I put a little barrier there just for temporarily today and let them just eat this grass over here because it's basically just weeds. I kind of plan on maybe building a shed over there so Ryden can store his bikes and stuff in there. Um, anyway, so there's chickens. I have about, I think I'm down to about, I don't know, I haven't counted lately, 16 to 18 chickens. And I think some of them are geriatric chickens that don't lay eggs anymore, but my wife won't let me cull the flock. So we just basically, they're retired. So we just basically feed them, they eat, and they're just living, living on the dole, I guess. But we get quite a few eggs. I eat three eggs a day, uh, probably at least six mornings I eat three eggs a day. And then I, um, so I enjoy the eggs. We give a lot away, you know, if we get an overabundance. Uh, they slow down different times of the year where they don't lay quite as many. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, 
So let me update you on my treatment this week. I had treatment on Tuesday. It was very similar week to last time. Tuesday, got the treatment, felt fine. Wednesday morning, basically felt okay. Started to get a little worse Wednesday. Had to go in for this shot uh, Wednesday afternoon, early evening. It has to be 24 hours after my treatment. I don't know whether it's just the chemo or a combination with the shot, but after I get that shot, I am zapped. And then Thursday was the worst day again. Thursday, I just plan on, man, that Thursday, I ain't doing nothing but laying around and recuperating. And then Friday, yesterday, it was okay. I woke up in the morning. Amy and I got a lot of stuff done around the yard. Um, we burned a lot of brush, put a lot of stuff over at the little village brush pile, burned some piles of wood, cleaned up the yard. Uh, just did outside stuff. I actually installed a whole house humidifier into my ductwork yesterday. So I felt really productive, but then boom, I crashed and that was it for me. So on this morning, I woke up at 3.30 and that's sort of par for the course. And I just figured, you know, I just resigned myself to it. I got up and studied and read and uh, just use the time. I am not going to sleep. So anyway, last week, I'll update you on this. I know I'm going really fast. My focus is not good these weeks either. Uh, last week, uh, sometime I was drying my head in the shower. I might have talked about this and just felt like it was towel fuzz in my mouth. What in the world? And I pull it out and it's a handful of hair. And then I look at my head in the mirror and it's like all blotchy. People noticed it on Sunday that I was, my hair was really thinning. So I just, Denise, Josiah was in town for a haircut. So um, I said to Denise, I said, it's time. So I think it was really kind of difficult for her to shave off my head. And so she did it. So it was like a burr cut where the hair was like, you know, eighth to a 16th inch long. And that was sort of uncomfortable. So a couple of days later, I went ahead after a shower and just shaved it smooth. So there it is. There's Ron's bald head. I promised you a bald head. Bald is beautiful now. So I can officially say it. So I'll wear the hat as much as possible. But uh, so Telly Savalas, I think, is winning over. Uh, my brother is a fan of Scott Adams, and he sent me a picture of Scott Adams that I look like Scott Adams. He's the Dilbert guy. So, uh, and that probably was the winner, especially with the glasses. Um, not Shaq. Uh, no, not, not uh, Samuel Jackson, I don't think either, or not Yul Brenner either. Heads totally shaped different. Um, but anyway, uh, I take it in stride. And God is good. Thank you for the encouraging words. I think one of the things I've learned in this, the one thing that's been probably, I don't feel like anyone has to come visit me. In fact, there are times the way I feel that I wouldn't want anyone to come visit me. Not that you can. If you do, you would be totally welcome. And I'm sure it would be an encouragement. But I really like the comments on Facebook. I like the texts I received, the little notes that I received. Uh, I think, you know, learning that and maybe being more active in doing that for people is something maybe I've learned. Uh, just sending a text occasionally has been really encouraging. There's a lot of folks that really are pretty uh, faithfully do that. <laughs> something, something spooked the chickens. I think one gets spooked and it's just sort of a, a, a domino effect. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to sign off. I want to keep this short, but I feel pretty good today. I think it's I'm going to break through and start feeling better and better. And um, I'm preaching on only Sunday morning this week. And John Cernius is very graciously filling in for me for Sunday school and no Sunday evening service because I know the energy level just will, and concentration level won't be there. So uh, again, thank you for the passages of scripture that you shared. I've looked at them and I appreciate it. And they've been a blessing. And uh, just thank you for the prayer and the support. Amy has been wonderful this week. Uh, she's uh, been went over and above and beyond the call of duty of taking care of me. And that's been a blessing. And of course, Denise is always, uh, just as always, is just uh, unbelievable in her love and and care for me beyond what I could ever do. If she was in my shoes, it would be bad. So I love you folks. Thanks again. And uh, if you have any questions for me or just feel free to comment. Appreciate you. Thank you.